Hello guys and girls, voices from the dark here. You know that on this channel we only bring you the latest in games. <laughs> Today we are going back to 2002 when the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind was released, considered by many to be the best Elder Scrolls game ever. And it's a game that I have never played. Mm -hmm. I came in during Oblivion, loved Oblivion to death, I played Skyrim and you know how much I played Skyrim but I've never tried Morrowind, mostly because I was put off by the graphics, but lately I've had an urge to jump into a game that's less about hand-holding and more about sort of the nitty-gritty of fantasy and... Morrowind could be a good choice. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to make five episodes of this and see how I feel at the end of it. If I like the game, I'll continue. If I don't like it, we'll call it there, but at least we will explore and try out this thing. So, I have thought up a character, and we are going to be going with him. This music is really good, by the way. I'm like, I don't want to press the new game button, because it's going to cut off the music. So, the mods I'm using in this one, they're not great. I originally got a graphics enhancing mod, but it made Morrowind not look like Morrowind, so I was like, well, what's the point then? I just made it so the game is HD, the field of view is slightly higher, and the menus are crisper, and a few bug fixes. That's essentially the changes that I've made. So let us begin our journey. Each event is preceded by prophecy, but without the hero, there is no event. In the waning years of the third era of Tamriel, a prisoner born on a certain day to uncertain parents was sent under guard, without explanation, to Morrowind, ignorant of the role he was to play in that nation's history. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat, to the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Ugh. Stand up. There you go. Hey, beautiful. You were dreaming. What's your name? My name. I will get to that later. I will get to rechange my name and race later, so I'll do that then. Well, not even last night. I was to tell you. Wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. We'll see about that. Oh, look at that. Got a Why? guard coming. Here comes the guard. This is where you get off. Come with me. Alright. Lead the way. So, pretty normal controls. We can't see our character yet because, well, we haven't made it, so. Who knows what's behind the camera right now? Probably some sort of default Dark Elf or something. Morrowind is landed a Dark Elf. I believe this is the island of Vardenfell. Up to the north... East? Get yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. Oh, hello, hello. We're gonna play as a male, so... The sooner you leave, the sooner we can move on. I love your mouth, by the way. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Also, the woman who was- there's so many similar voice actors, but they're also new ones, which is really exciting. So, in the introduction, we heard the... The imp the normal Imperial lady was doing the narration. This guy I never heard before. Haven't heard her either, I believe. Not the Dark Elf. This is where they want you. That's Owen, the Blade Master from the arena. To the census office. Alright, sure thing, Owen. Um, you're less of a jerk now. Oh, well, kinda. Let's go. Move it along. All right, I'm going. I'm going. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. None of your business. So here we got the race menu. What I found out, I've played through the beginning just to sort of get a grip of it, and they don't give you any information about the races. And I want to read that information. So I'm gonna just choose a race, and then later we'll go through the list again, and I'll read about the races because there's a lot of information in this game, and it's also vital to actually being able to play the game properly. I also hear a lot of similarities in the music to Oblivion's soundtrack later on, and of course you can hear the similarities between Morrowind's main theme and Skyrim's main theme. The Jeremy Soul reused a lot, but that's fine if the melodies are great. Also this guy. Can you figure out his voice actor? Ah uh, yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be 
recorded before you're officially released. Hold on. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. Let's put it down a little bit. Yes. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So usually in Oblivion, you get that you can pick from a class list or like do it yourself and create a custom class. We can also answer his questions, which is very like... I've been very interested in like Dungeons and Dragons lately and I watched a lot of videos about that and also about like movies made with that sort of idea like the gamers Darkness Rising and Journey Quest and Humans and Households from Zombie Orpheus Entertainment. So I want to just answer his questions and see what class I get just for fun just to sort of live in it because there's a lot more dialogue in this game so that's something you need to be prepared for at the get-go because there's no quest log you no note down everything in your journal you need to talk to people to get information and then figure out where you are it's a much more hardcore sort of system and it intrigues me maybe I'll end up hating it after five episodes but for now it intrigues me let's answer his questions chance upon a strange animal, its leg trapped in a hunter's claw snare. Judging from the bleeding, it will not survive long. Oh. What do you do? What do I do? Well, the thing is, I have a character. I need to think what he would do. I will uh, introduce the character to you in not too long. Use herbs from your pack to put it to sleep. Do not interfere in the natural evolution of events, but rather take the opportunity to learn more about a strange animal that I've never seen before, or draw your dagger, mirthly ending its life with a single thrust. What would this man do? I think he would draw his dagger. One summer afternoon, your father gives you a choice of chores. What would you rather do? Go catch fish, gather herbs, or work in the forge. And you plow. Hmm. Work in the forge. Your cousin has given you a very embarrassing nickname, and even worse, what? likes to call you it in front of your friends. You have asked him to stop but he finds it very amusing to watch you blush. Beat up your cousin you and tell, <laughs> then tell him that if he ever calls you that nickname again, he will bloody him worse than this time. Make up an even more embarrassing nickname for him and use the constant until he learns his lesson. Make up a story that makes your nickname a badge of honor instead of something humiliating. I feel like my character would be that smart, because he definitely would have the skills to do that. There is a lot of heated discussion at the local tavern over a group of people called telepaths. They've been hired by certain city-state kings. Rumor has it these telepaths read a person's mind and tell their lord whether a follower is telling the truth or not. You believe what? I believe what? So there are telepaths that have been hired and they can read a person's mind. Loyal followers to the king have nothing to fear from a telepath. It is important to have a method of finding assassins and spies, so it's my opinion on it. It's, it's a terrible practice a person saw through his own and no one, not even a king, has the right to make such an invasion into another human's mind. In these times, it is a necessary evil, though you do not necessarily like the idea. A telepath could have certain advantages during a time of war or in finding someone innocent of a crime. What would I go with? I believe that Brynjar has a strong sense of justice even though he's had a very like barbaric upbringing in some ways so i think he would dislike the practice your mother sends you to the market with a list of goods to buy after you finish you find that by mistake a shopkeeper has given you too much money back in exchange for one of the items what do you do that's a good uh, that's a good question Pocket the extra money, knowing that shopkeepers in general tend to overcharge customers anyway. Return to the store and give the shopkeeper his hard-earned money, explaining to him the mistake. Decide to put the extra money to good use and purchase items that would help your family. In real life, this depends on how far away from the store I am. If I walked five steps from the counter and realize, I'll turn around and give it back. But if I've walked five minutes out of the store already, I'm not gonna go back and give it. But here, after you finish... He values honesty. He does. While in a marketplace, you witness a thief <gasps> cut a purse from a noble. No. Even as he does so, the noble notices and calls for the city guards. In his haste to get away, the thief drops the purse near you. Surprisingly, no one seems to notice the bag of coins at your feet. What do you do? Now, here's the thing. It, the first one, pick up the bag and signal to the guard, knowing that the only honorable thing to do is return the money to his rightful owner. Yes, but 
why like there's no guarantee that they won't attack you for having the coin purse you know what's to say you weren't like an accomplice or something so I, I find this one to actually be risky leave the bag knowing that it's better not to get involved or pick up the bag and pocket it he would actually not get involved uh, this guy sounds like a wuss but he just he has like his empathetic and like just sides but he also knows how to stay out of trouble your father sends you on a task which you loathe. Cleaning the stables. Hey. On the way there, pitchfork in hand, you run into your friend from the homestead near your own. He offers to do it for you. In return for a future favor of his choosing. What do you do? Accept his offer, reasoning that as long as the stables are clean, it matters not who does the cleaning. Decline his offer knowing that your father expects you to do the work, and it is better not to be in debt. Ask him to help you, knowing that two people can do the job faster and want to agree to help him with one task of his choosing in the in the future. Now here's the thing, our father was a very important man, and even our name reflects that we were the son of our father. So I believe what Brynjar would oh I said his name. I believe what Brynjar would think is that this might be a test from my father, and he would decline and do it himself. Your mother asks you to help fix the stove. While you're working, a very hot pipe slips its moorings and falls towards her. What do you do? Okay, so this is how I want to save my mother. That's good, because Brynjar cares a lot about his mother. Grab the hot pipe and try to push it away. Push your mother out of the way. No, his mother is all sickly and frail. That would probably not good. Position yourself between the pipe and your mother. Yes. While in town, the baker gives you a sweet roll. Ooh. Delighted, you take it into an alley to enjoy, only to be intercepted by a gang of three other kids your age. The leader demands the sweet roll, or else he and his friends will beat you and take it. <laughs> what do you do? Drop the sweet roll and step on it, then get ready for the fight. Give him the sweet roll now without your argument, knowing that the later this afternoon you will have all your friends with you and can come and take whatever he owes you. Ooh. That kind of fits, because we are the son of the leader of a clan. Act like you're going to give him the sweet roll, but at the last minute throw it in the air, hoping that they'll pay attention to it long enough for you to get a shot in on the leader. That's also kind of badass. This is more tactical, I feel. And it also has to do with the element of revenge, which is kind of important for Brynjar's story. Entering town, you find that you are witness to a very well-dressed man running from a crowd. He screams to you for help. The crowd behind him seems very angry. Rush to the town. What do you do? Rush to the town's aid immediately, despite your lack of knowledge around the circumstances. Rush to the man's aid immediately, despite your lack of knowledge of the circumstances. Or stand aside and allow the man and mob to pass, realizing that it's probably best not to get involved. Hey, it's none of my business. Your personality and past reflects you as a knight. Okay, yeah, that's not too far off to the class I'm thinking. It's a warrior. It's a warrior type. Okay. Very good. The I'll change proceeded. that. You mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? I just wanted to go through that once at least. So we have some of the signs. Some of them have similar bonuses. Some of them do not. Our birth sign. The Apprentice. Elfborn. Fortify maximum magicka 1.5 times intelligence, or but it gives you weakness to magicka 50%. Now, I've never been a fan of the birth signs that give you weaknesses. Because I had a very bad experience in Oblivion when I picked the Lord sign, we'll get to that. The Agenarch is pretty interesting. Womb burn. Spell absorption 50 points. Fortify maximum magicka 2.5. Two times normal amount and stunted magicka, meaning you don't regenerate magicka, but you start with a lot more and you absorb from spells cast on you. You pretty much have to build your character around that to make it work properly, I believe. The lady is probably the one I'm going to go with because I find endurance very important and personality can also fit Brynjar's character. So, fortify personality and endurance. The Lord, it gives you 100% weakness to fire, but it does give you blood of the north. And at low levels, blood of the north is a pretty good healing ability. But later in the game, I remember I came to the arena in the Imperial City, and I could not for the life of me beat people using fire, because it would just eat my health up in no time. 
the lover. Mooncalf fortify agility 25 points and it gives you the lover's kiss where you can paralyze for 60 seconds on target but you lose 200 points of fatigue. And when you get knocked down in this game with low fatigue, yeah, you're gonna get beaten. I found that out the hard way when I was testing out the combat. The mage. Eh, fortify maximum magicka 0.5 times 0.5x. Good, since it has no downsides. The ritual. Blessed word, turn on dead. Blessed touch, turn on dead. So you have two spells that turn on dead. I wonder if one is range and one is touch. Or if they're just two touch spells. Mara's gift. Restore health 100 points on yourself once a day. That's pretty good. The serpent. Poison 3 points for 30 seconds on... 30 sex? Yeah, sex. Seconds. <laughs> I was like, what did I just say? Damage health 1 point for 30 sex on self. <laughs> sex. Okay. Interesting. You poison somebody else, but you also take... Damage yourself. The shadow is, as you might expect, invisibility for 60 seconds on self. The steed fortifies speed 25 points. I kind of want it because you are so gosh darn slow in this game. It's insane how slow you move. Walking is like this. Running is like this. It's a... It, there's no difference between running and walking in this game. There's no sprint. The thief. Sanctuary 10 points. I believe Sanctuary makes it so that you are like 50% harder to hit with melee weapons. Because in this game, whether you hit people, it's based on a percentage instead of just you're actually close enough to hit somebody. So you can stand and wail at somebody but not hit them if your hit chance is really low. Like how it would be if you play like Dungeons and Dragons and you stood near an enemy and you rolled a dice and you got, or one die, and you got a low number meaning you would miss. The same goes for the enemies though, they can hit you, but still miss. Also, you don't have a 100% chance to use your spells. It's pretty hardcore. The tower. Beggar's nose, detect animal 200 feet, detect enchantment 200 feet, and detect key 200 feet. So it's like finding stuff on the map and you can open doors 50 points with the tower key. And the warrior, fortify attack 10 points. Wait, fortify attack? What does attack mean? Attack's not a stat, though. Is that the same as strength? Regardless, we are going to go with a lady for personality and endurance. Interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. It is not. So let us go over it, shall we? First of all, my name. This name... My first name is totally fine and lore-wise. I don't think the last name actually fits into how they m did names in Skyrim. Because, yes, I'm going to be a Nord. Yes, I know you're shocked. But it's very Scandinavian and Old Norse, Icelandic, Norwegian type Viking name. And I'm just going to go with it because I don't necessarily care about being 100% true to the lore. I just care about having a cool character and basing it somewhat in the lore. He's going to be Brynjar Einarsson. And Einarsson essentially means that he is the son of Einar, and Einar is his father. And as far as I know, Einar can mean alone in Icelandic. And Brynjar comes from the Norwegian word Brynja, which means a breastplate. So Brynjar Einarsson, the most powerful Argonian. No, he's not an Argonian, he's a Nord. So I want to read about the different races as well. It's going to be a lot of reading and information in this one, but that's how it's going to go. That's that's Morrowind, and I assume that a lot of people watching this are also going to be old Morrowind people, so they don't necessarily mind it. At home in water and on land, the Argonians of Black Marsh are well suited to the treacherous swamps of their homeland, with natural immunities protecting them from disease and poison. The female life face is highly intelligent and gifted in the magical arts. Yeah. In this game and Oblivion, there's a difference between male characters and female characters, where female characters are generally smarter but weaker physically, and males are the opposite. The more aggressive male face has the traits of the hunter, stealth, speed, and agility. Argonians are reserved with strangers, yet fiercely loyal to those they accept as friends. Argonians and Khajiit cannot wear helmets or boots, which is a big negative for playing as them. And they, they look like just scary reptiles. So that's, that's, change sex. It basically just changes like that, that's great. It's, it's pretty, it's terrifying stuff. Bretons, oh gosh. 
You beautiful, beautiful man. Uh, they are incredibly handsome in this game. All right. So Argonians, they can resist a seas, they're immune to po poison, and they can breed underwater. But this is like a spell instead of just being a passive ability, which is interesting. The Breton has a magicka bonus and resist magicka and a dragon skin spell. I quite like the Breton race, honestly. As you can see, whenever I choose a new race, my height is adjusted. So I'm gonna be taller and higher. Passionate and eccentric, poetic and flamboyant, intelligent and willful, the Bretons feel an inborn, instinctive bond with the mercurial forces of magic and the supernatural. Well, that's because they're like half-elf, so... Many great sorcerers have come out of their home province of High Rock, including Marthar. And in addition to their quick and perceptive grasp of spellcraft, enchantment and alchemy, even the humblest of Bretons can boast a high resistance to destructive and dominating magical energies. Cool class. Cool class. Dark Elf time, Ancestor Guardian. They can like summon an Ancestral Guardian. And I suppose it also gives them Sanctuary? Okay. Resist Fire, 75%. Good. I guess if you got a Dark Elf with the Lord, you would only have minus 25% Fire. And you could probably get other bonuses as well. But the Lord ability is not that useful either way, so why? Why? Dark Elf. In the Empire, Dark Elves is the common usage, but in their Morrowind homeland they call themselves the Dunmer. The dark-skinned, red-eyed Dark Elves combine powerful intellect with strong and agile physiques, producing superior warriors and sorcerers. On the battlefield, Dark Elves were noted for their skilled and balanced integration of swordsmen, marksmen, and war wizards. In character, they are grim, distrusting, and disdainful of other races. Yep, and we'll be seeing plenty of those. High Elf. Magicka bonus, weakness to Magicka, Fire, Frost, and Shock. But they resist disease. But they do start with a lot of Magicka and a lot of high magic stats, so they're... That's something. And they're tall. The High Elves consider themselves the most civilized culture of Tamriel. The common tongue of the Empire, Tamrielic, is based on Altmer's speech and writing. And most of the Empire's arts, crafts, and sciences derive from High, Elves tra high Elven traditions. Deft, intelligent, and strong-willed, High Elves are often gifted in the arcane arts, and High Elves boast more. Boast that their sublime physical nature makes them far more resistant to the seas than the lesser races. I'm mixing up my words here. The imp oh gosh, get some get some hair on your head. I think one of these styles looks like a poodle. Poodle style. I don't know. It's like he put a poodle on his head. Star of the West, they can absorb fatigue, and Voice of the Emperor, they can charm people. The well-educated and well-spoken native of Cyrodiil are known for the discipline and training of their citizen armies. Though physically less imposing than the other races, Imperials are shrewd diplomats and traders, and these traits, along with their remarkable skill and training as light infantry, have enabled them to subdue all the other nations and races, and to have erected the monument to peace and prosperity that comprises the Glorious Empire. No, thank you. Kajit! Look at that! Oh, such a cute Kajit! Oh, such a cute Kajit! Oh, wow. Just went full uh, tiger style. <laughs> I want to be a Kajit now. Eye of Night and Eye of Fear, Demoralize and Night Eye. Night Eye seems to actually look sort of nice in this game. The Kajit of Elsewhere can vary in appearance from the early Elven to the Cathay Rat Jaguar men to the great Senji Tiger. The most common breed found in Morrowind is the Suthe Rot. I never learned how to say that. It's intelligent, quick, and agile. Dots. Khajiit of all breeds have a weakness for sweets, especially the drug known as Skuma. Many Khajiit disdain weapons in favor of their natural claws. They make excellent thieves due to their natural agility and unmatched acrobatics ability. I recently played a game, The Hobbit, on PS2. And one of the characters there, Bard, was voiced by the guy who did the male Khajiit voices in Skyrim. I, I, I was blown away, it was amazing. I will skip Nord because that will be the race we play. Orc, we're almost done. Resist Magicka and Berserk, fortify health, fatigue and attack, but drain your agility. Attack's an interesting stat, I don't know exactly what it uh, comprises of. I'm open to advice and tips. But I always appreciate it when people present their advice and gameplay tips in a 
uh, sort of sophisticated manner. Basically, don't be Nassim, don't be cynical or condescending or sarcastic in your critique of me playing the game. Just, just be cool and nice when you deliver it, and I'm a lot more likely to actually listen to you. That's just how it is. These sophisticated barbarian beast people of the Rothgarian and Dragontail Mountains are noted for their unshakable courage in war and their unflinching endurance of hardships. Orc warriors in heavy armor are among the finest frontline troops in the Empire. Most Imperial citizens regard Orc society as rough and cruel, but there is much to admire in their fierce tribal loyalties and generous equality of rank and respect among the sexes. All of the sexes. Red guards! Now these people... They know how to battle. Look at that. The most naturally talented warriors in Tamriel, the dark-skinned, worry-haired Red Guards of Hammerfell seem born to battle, though their pride and fierce independence of spirits make them more suitable as scouts or skirmishers, or as free-ranging heroes and adventurers, than as rank-and-file soldiers. In addition to their cultural affinities, for many weapon and armor styles, Red Guards are also physically blessed with hardy constitutions and quickness of foot. Red Guards are pretty badass. Gotta say. What elves? They look beautiful. No matter what you say, resist disease, poison, and the adrenaline rush, of course. What elf resist disease, and they have beast tongue. Which isn't amazing, but they can command some weaker creatures. The Wood Elves are the various barbarian, elven clan folk of the western Wayland Wood Forests. These country cousins of the High Elves and Dark Elves are nimble and quick in body and wit, and because of their curious natures and natural agility, Wood Elves are especially suitable as scouts. Wow, I'm really short, I just noticed. Agents and thieves. But most of all, the Wood Elves are known for their skills with bows. There are no finer archers in all of Tamriel. That's true, but we're gonna be a Nord. Look at that beautiful man. Look at that beautiful, beautiful man. So our character, Brynjar Einarsson, he's about 27 at this point in his journey. So, thing is, I, I would like some sort of bear on him, but the bear faces, the beard, not the bear faces, the beard faces, look a bit, I don't know, I think all of these faces look off. This one is just creepy, this one is just like staring into your soul. Well, there's... this one is just like, I'm gonna kill you when you sleep. There's some creepy face... and what is this? Is that some sort of pedo stash? That's creepy. And that just doesn't match with the color of everything else. So we have some different hairstyles, but there's... <laughs> the character creation was not great in Morrowind. That's something we all have to agree on. It looks like I just have like a... Like a, I have a blanket behind me with the same texture as his hair. It looks like he's half sheep. That looks awful. That's a cool hairstyle, but it would suit a mage better than what I am. But I'd want some sort of hair. I I know my pronunciation of that word is bad. I'm really sorry. I just I struggle with the word a lot. So that's that's that. So I. This one is so short though. I would like something a bit longer. This one is like Nordic and it looks cool. This I love everything that's going on here, but his face looks like Hadoop! Hadoop! He needs to be a bit wiser. That's what I feel. Maybe I should just go for baby face. I'm just gonna go for baby face. He has a little bit of a beard, but. We're gonna go for baby face. We can always at a later point get some mods that makes our faces look better But I wanted to at least in the start Appreciate Morrowind for what it is immune to frost and resist shock and they have a Woad ability they can shield 30 points on themselves and they can do frost damage 25 points on touch Which is a nice little destruction spell so Nords, there we go, got some proper height again. The citizens of Skyrim are aggressive and fearless in war, industrious and enterprising in trade and exploration, strong, stubborn and hardy. Nords are famous for their resistance to cold, even magical frost. Violence is an accepted and comfortable aspect of Nord culture. Nords of all classes are skilled with a variety of weapons and armor styles, and they cheerfully face battle with an ecstatic ferocity that shocks and appalls their enemies. Alright. 
The last thing to edit now is our class, because we don't want to be a knight. I'm going to fill out those forms myself. The class name is going to be an Einarian, because that was the term used for people in the clan of Einar, and Brynjard was Einar's only son. And I will get into the story of that clan later, it's fictional. So, specialization will be combat, out of combat, magic, and stealth. Our favorite attributes, we should perhaps go over them. Strength affects your starting health, how much you can carry, your maximum fatigue, and how much damage you do in melee. That's going to be one of our attributes. Now we have intelligence, determines your maximum amount of magicka. Willpower affects your ability to resist magic and your maximum fatigue. Agility affects your stability to dodge and hit targets in melee, as well as your maximum fatigue. We're probably gonna need some agility later on, because we start off with generally low agility with this. Speed determines how fast you move. Yes, please. Endurance affects your starting health, your health gain per level, and your maximum fatigue. From what I've gathered, if we get a high endurance early on, that's pretty good, so I'm gonna go with that. Personality affects your ability to deal with other characters and how much they like you. And luck affects every action you do in a small way. Luck seems more important in this game than the other games, because it sort of affects all chances of success with almost everything, so... It's not a terrible stat. Endurance. I believe that's gonna put our endurance at like... 85. Which means that if you had an endurance of 50 at level 1, and you leveled up, you would gain 5 health points. If you have an endurance of 80, you would gain 8 health points. Meaning you're already off the bat, off to a better start. So, our major skills are as follows. We should probably go over the skills, actually. Block. Block skill allows one to use shields to block an melee attack. A successful block removes all damage from the attack. I'm unsure if you need to like raise your shield in this one or if just having a shield on you will help you mitigate the damage. We will find that out. Armorer. Armor skill is used to maintain weapons and armor at top effectiveness, so it would be like the armor skill in Oblivion. Worn weapons do less damage. Worn armor provides less protection against attacks, as wear increases the diminishing effectiveness of weapons and armor is dramatic. So, what's interesting about this game is that they have four different armor types. They have unarmored. Unarmored skill lets one avoid or reduce injury during combat while not wearing any armor by evading, deflecting, or absorbing blows. Those versed in this skill are better defended wearing no armor at all than they are wearing armor. It's pretty strange. Then we have light armor, of course. Light armor skill lets one move and defend while wearing lightweight, flexible armors like leather, boiled leather, fur, sheetin? Sheetin? and glass armor. To use any style of armor effectively, the wearer must be trained, conditioned, and skilled in its use. Then we have medium armor. Medium armor skill lets one move and defend while wearing durable but flexible armors like chain, scale, bone mold, and orcish armor. To use any style of armor effectively, the wearer must be trained, conditioned, and skilled in its use. This is the style we're gonna go with. And we have heavy armor. Heavy armor skill is used to move and defend while wearing massive and rigid armors like iron, steel, silver, dweemer, ebony, and daedric armor. Use any style of armor effectively, the wearer must be trained, condition and skilled in his use. Batteries are not included. There are also a lot of weapon styles in this one. You have blunt weapon. Blunt weapon skill makes you more effective when using heavy bashing weapons like maces, hammers, clubs, or staves. You have long blade. Long blade skill lets one use broadswords, sabers, longswords, claymores, katanas, and daikatanas effectively. You have axe. There, there's so much more variety in the different options. Axe skill helps the user wield heavy chopping weapons like war axes and battle axes more effectively. Spear. Spear skills permits effective use of long hafted thrusting weapons like spears and halberds. Where are the other ones? Short blade. Characters with great short blade skills are more effective with short quick thrusting weapons like daggers, tantos, short swords and wakasajis. And of course we have marksmen. While with the marksman skill, one is more effective with ranged weapons like the short bow, long bow, crossbow, throwing star, and throwing knife. Good times. And you can use hand to hand in this one like Oblivion. Hand to hand skill is the martial art of unarmed combat. Hand to hand attacks damage only the fatigue of a standing opponent, but hand to hand attacks damage health when the target has been knocked unconscious by fatigue loss. Seems pretty hardcore, actually. Marksman is archery. It's called the same as in Oblivion. And we have Athletics. Athletic skill trains and conditions one for running and swimming. Skilled athletes move short and long distances over land with speed and efficiency. And they also swim swiftly underwater. We're just gonna be training this as we go. Hopefully as soon as possible, because gosh darn you move slow in this game. And the running animation is beautiful. 
Magic. The enchant skill. The skill governs the creation, use and recharging of enchanted items. Skilled enchanters are more successful at creating new items. Enchanted items burn less power and are recharged more effectively, efficiently from soul gems for a trained user. You can also go and pay people to enchant your gear. It seems that in this game you can find a spell, like let's say a fortify strength spell. You gain that spell and then you have a piece of armor that can be enchanted. So I believe if you take a soul gem and a lot of money to somebody in the mages guild, they could make like a fortify strength pair of boots, for example. But I believe if you get fortify strength, you can also get fortify any ability if you want to. We have Destruction. The Destruction skill is the mastery of the spell effects of the College of Destruction. Their spells harm living and unliving things and include elemental damage, draining, damaging, vulnerability, and disintegration magical effects. Alteration. Students of the College of Alteration manipulate the physical world and its natural properties. Alteration effects include water breathing and walking, jumping, levitating, that one seems pretty cool, Burdening, opening, and locking, and creating shield barriers against physical damage. Illusion. Spell effects of the College of Illusion alter the perceptions and thoughts of living subjects. Illusion effects blind, illuminate, paralyze, and silence, calm or enrage, charm, distract, and camouflage, and render invisible. So a lot about that. These ones are pretty good for a, for a thief if you want to have some sort of sneaky chameleon effect going on. Conjuration. This spell affects the College of Conjuration. The spell effects of the College of Conjuration include the mental domination of mundane and magical creatures, summonation of otherworldly weapons and armor, and summonations of Daedric or undead servants and powers to serve and protect the master. Similar to the other games. Mysticism. This was removed in Skyrim, if I remember correctly. The spells of the College of Mysticism shape and focus otherworldly forces to bind souls in gems, or teleport the caster's body, or manipulate the world with telekinesis, or absorb or reflect magical energies, or sense unseen objects at a distance. Again, we won't be a mage though, but we will get restoration, and I'll tell you why. Adepts of the College of Restoration heal, restore, and fortify the body's attributes and abilities, cure disease, and protect it from other malign influ influences. Restoration spells can also augment or absorb strength, endurance, intelligence, agility, and other bodily attributes. Alchemy. Alchemy identifies magical properties and mundane substances. Substances are consumed directly or prepared as potions to provide long-lasting benefits like healing and curing disease, water walking, magical shielding, and fortifying bodily attributes. And the unarmored skill. Security, also known as lockpicking in Skyrim. Security skill lets one open locked doors and containers with lockpicks or disarm traps with probes. This skill is essential for agents and thieves alike. Sneak. The sneak discipline is the art of moving unseen and unheard. Skilled sneaks are also adept pickpockets. So no separate... Wait, no, the, the pickpocket skill has never been separate, has it, in Skyrim? That was part of the sneak package. I honestly cannot remember. Acrobatics. Acrobatic skills enables one to jump long distances and to avoid damage on falling from great heights. Nimble acrobats can reach areas others cannot get to and can direct your paths while falling. Light armor. Light armor skill lets one move and defend while... We read that. Merchantile. The merchantile skill is the art of buying low and selling high. This skill guarantees lower initial prices for goods, equipment and services, and improved chances of getting better deals by bargaining. Speechcraft. Those skill in speechcraft influence others by admiring, intimidating, and taunting them. Listeners are more willing to divulge information or to entrust important tasks to the skilled speaker. And those are the things. That's a lot of skills. Okay. So, what we want as major skills. We want block. We want long blade because we're going to be using a sword mainly. Then we want marksman as a ranged option when enemies cannot be fought in melee. Our armor type will be, drumroll, medium armor. Because I think heavy armor might be a bit too a bit too heavy even though we have a pretty decent strength. I don't want to weigh myself down too much. And finally, restoration. I'll go over that later. Our minor skills are going to be armorer, athletics, security, sneak, and speechcraft. And there's a reason for all of these. Let me see. What am I looking for? Speechcraft. So, here's the thing. You can write a class description. And I'm going to. 
So, give me a minute to just write down some of what I wrote last night. This is not like super amazing plot you're about to hear. Uh, it's something I wrote last night when I was bored. So, all righty. Description is set, all of the stats are set up. Now, here's some of the backstory for him. So, and, and the class itself. So, the Inarian is a very versatile warrior. Men who served under Einar of East March during the last years of the Third Era were trained to be proficient in several combat-oriented skills. They had to be able to defend their village from any attacks, and some were briefly taught Nordic archery methods to help them fend off hosts at a distance. So, that explains our some of our major stats, like blocking, blades, marksman, and being proficient in medium armor, armor, and of course the athletics, that all sort of comes with that sort of training. While most of these stout Nord fighters spent their lives honing just these skills, Brynjör Einarsson took it upon himself to learn the basics of restoration magic when his mother fell ill. That's where the basics in restoration came in. Brynjar was adamant in his search for a cure, and in his travels he became a skilled navigator, which explains us being able to like use our journal and having the world map and sort of charting where we go, and his time spent with Einar, his father, going over battle tactics had made him good at both reading and writing, thus how we can both read and write, because I assume that's not a given in this time. After the betrayal of clan Uffe, and Uffe means, I believe that's a Danish form of Ulf, and Ulf can mean Wolfman in Old Norse, because they were a clan of barbarians who had lycanthropy and could turn into werewolves. And the portrayal of Clan Uffe I can go into later, but I didn't have space in that box for it. And he ends up being the last Einarian left on Tamriel, he was the last of his clan. Oh my god, I had a speller, spelling mistake there, ah, at the end. Wow, big spelling mistake. Will he honor his clan's legacy or fade into obscurity? Now that, that's the question everybody needs to ask themselves. Alright, let's edit that. This music's so good though. Let I me mean, listen to that music. Will he honor his clan's legacy or fade? So, now we were sent on a boat to Morrowind, here to Wardenfell. But why? Those questions will hopefully come soon. Also, the security, sneak and speechcraft are sort of skills he picked up during his travels. So as you can see, we have 60 strength, 30 intelligence. As you can see, our agility and intelligence are pretty low. And our willpower, speed and luck aren't anything to write home about, but our endurance is at 85, meaning we will get 8.5 points of health every level from the start. Also 60 strength, pretty decent. Brunar Einarsson, the Nord Einarian, born under the Lady, with all of his skills, let us begin! You now have a stats menu, where you can always view your information. The inventory, or like, the yeah, the inventory system in general is very interesting in this game. Right-clicking allows you to use your menus. When you're done with them, right-click again to close them. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Alright, I will do that. Read your papers by pressing the E while looking at them. Now select Take to pick them up. Okay. For release by Emperor Uriel Septim the Seventh's Decree to the district of Vardenfell in the province of Morrowind. This is the same Emperor Uriel Septim who we... who Grofbog met, and Grofbog tried to protect during the closing days of the Third Era. The name Brynjar Einarsson, Race Nord, Class Einarian, signed... Sucusius Ergala, there's a lot of tricky names in this one. Agent of the Sedan... Imperial Census and Excise. 16th of last seed, the Third Era, 427. Which is like six years before the Oblivion Crisis and the Fourth Era begins. You now have an inventory menu where you can see what you're carrying. Like all menus, right-click to use your new menu. So here's the thing. You right-click and this opens up. This is so... hardcore. I mean, and then you can like... move around these menus as you see fit and sort of design your own user interface... based on what you wanna... It's, it's, so, it's so neat. It's really cool. What happens? Oh, and then I can hide... I don't, that it's like you have a lot of customization of your UI right from the very get-go 
What I found to be a problem is that they don't really show what you can and cannot take. There's no stealing icon in this one, so I just assume that whenever you take something, it's bad if it's inside. Now there's a limeware platter here, and I actually found out something. You remember how in Fallout 4, I tried to desperately like throw away my stolen goods when people caught me? I think we can do this, and then he comes running, and then I plays it away. Oh, uh, the guard's talking to me. What are you doing? We'll let your actions go for now, yes! But once you release, stuff like that will get you arrested. Thank you! Okay. And then you can pick up the items. Yes! Yes! I'm gonna steal all the items. But after this, I won't get away with it anymore, so I wanted to use it. Oh, that's cool! That's like a warrior and that's a mage. Continue through to the next building and talk to Celis Gravius. Alright. So, I'm an officer of the Imperial Legion, move along. What is the Imperial Legion, Durr? We have garrisons at Fort Pel Pel Pelagiad in Pelagiad, Hawkmoth Fort in Ebonheart, Fort Moonmoth in Balmora, Fort Buckmoth in Aldrune, and Fort Darius in Gnesis. Were you looking to join the Imperial Legion? Is that a, not an option? All the garrisons are presently at full strength, except perhaps the Death Sheet Legion at Fort Darius in the West Gash near the village of Gnesis. If you're interested, you'll have to talk to General Darius there. Interesting. No, here's what's cool. Here's what's cool. We don't have a quest log. I, I can't check it yet. Yay. Oh, okay. Third person. Here we go. Look at our beautiful character. <sighs> Who thought this was a good running animation? Seriously. Who thought this was a good running animation? <laughs> It's beautiful. You're absolutely beautiful, Brynjar. You should learn how to do combat. Pick up the dagger on the table by activating it with E. Alright, iron dagger. Equip the dagger by dropping it on your picture in the menu. It's pretty hardcore. Drop! Press R to pull out your weapon. Once your weapon is ready, to hold and release the left mouse button to swing it. The harder you swing, the more damage it does, but the more fatigue it will drain. Alright, pull it out. Here! And we can go stabby stabby. Die, basket! Die, battles! And everything else. Ooh. Hello, book! So this has to do with the constellations. I'll take it! I am quite fond of reading, so I will take it. A large quama egg. Cannot open this. Let's see what's this. No to Hruskar! Hruskar, don't think I've forgotten our wager. I want this dagger sharp as a scamp's claw by morning. Well, I've taken it now. What's this? Bread. You can eat ingredients by equipping them on your character in the inventory menu. Ingredients have different properties, some may hurt you and some may help. It's a piece of bread! Unless it's really moldy and stale. Bread has no effect on you. Good to know! What's on here? Crab meat! Perfect. Ooh. Apprentice's lockpick? A quick lockpick's in the inventory menu. There's a lot of like drag and drop stuff onto your character to equip- th Oh! Oh, people better be scared. Then I think we can like tickle this box over here. Lockpick failed. And I believe the more times you try it, I mean I should be able to do it. It's an apprentice's lockpick. There we go. What's in it? Ooh, gold. Nice. I approve of that. What's this? Silver candlestick. Equip lights and torches too. You could just equip anything. Can I equip a <laughs> Yes! Fear me, for I am the Chandelier Warrior! Huzzah! Stay far away from me, you fiends! The fact that you can just go up and grab a chandelier. I look like I'm some sort of waiter. The waiter with an intent to kill. You know, have a, have a map menu. I should put that down though, because it's gonna, yeah, run out. Now we have a little map too. So this is Vardenfell. It's not as big as the other games. it's I think it's among the smallest areas in any Elder Scrolls game, but I do have the two expansions as well that are included in the Game of the Year edition, and we have the local one where we can find the different offices. And we will chart this as we go, because Brynjar has a lot of experience with navigating, and he will write useful things whenever he wants to. If we try to go here, it'll be like, check the barrel to your left and get the ring inside. Like, what? There's an engraved ring of healing. What I found is that the items in this game if they have magical properties, like this one, or sort of health 1 to 5 points on self, 
you can use rings with magical effects without needing the level to cast it. So this could have a really powerful effect on it and I could just freely use it without having the skill to actually use the proper magic spell itself. You now have a magic menu, right click to use your new menu. Okay. So I did get one, during the bug fixes, I found one little adjustment fix thingy. It's called essentially like swift casting. So usually in this game, if you had your weapon out, you couldn't cast a spell. You'd have to remove your weapon, pull out your hands and then cast a spell. I believe that was the same for both player and NPC. I got a fix called swift casting, which lets it be more like oblivion, where you can actually cast a spell while your weapon is out. It's just a convenience thing, and since it also applies to NPCs, I feel that it's semi-fair. It's not a game-breaking thing, it's just convenient. So we have the Thunderfist spell, as indicated down here. Vode, shield 30 points. Hearth heal. Neat. Restored health 20 to 80 points on self, it's really random. So as you can see here, here we can see the cost, it's gonna cost us 13 magicka, and we have 30, and we have a 74% chance of successfully casting it. You're not guaranteed to throw a spell, that's hardcore. And we have the engraved ring of healing, which costs five and has a charge of 20. So it uses our magicka, and it can be used 20 times to heal ourselves. So that's pretty sweet actually. Wheeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
The South Wall Corner Club is in South East Balmora on the east side of the river. For more detailed directions, talk to Elon the Scout at Ariel's Trade House here in Seda. But take my advice, you're new here. Take the Silt Strider to Balmora. Fast, cheap, safe. Cross the bridge and head east. Can't miss it. Right, we can use Silt Striders. There's no fast travel, but there's a lot of different teleportation methods around the place. The Silt Strider. Silt Striders carry passengers and cargo between settlements on Vardenfell. Fears depend on distance to be traveled. Silt Striders are giant insects. A compartment for passengers and cargo is hollowed from the creature's shell. The driver directs the beast directly by manipulating exposed organs and tissues. Nice. Silt Striders travel between Aldrun, Balmora, Seda, Suran, Nisis, Mulagmar, Margon, and North Landing near Vivek. Alright, I believe we have talked to you about everything. We've talked about Caius. Report to him in Balmora. I can't tell you where to find him. Okay, someone else can direct you to him. So you're just a big old lazy face. Let's see. Join the Imperial Legion. All the garrisons are presently at full strength. Yes, you said the same thing. Talk to General Darius. I don't know if the Imperial Legion is really what I want to join, though. My trades. You're a knight errant of the Order of the Ebonheart, an Imperial Emissary attached to the Census and Excise Office. Alright. And now uh, you're proud to be an Imperial. There are legions of rule of law. We brought peace and civilization to the promises of Tamriel. You keep telling yourself that. Alright. I believe that was everything. Thank you. Ta-ta! Press J to use your journal and review what you've been told. You should probably check out Ariel's trade house up on the left. You're on your own now. Good luck. And so the game just leaves you with that. You're like, wait, what do I do now? You can check our journal. So... We will scribble down notes in our book here. The 16th of Last Seed, Day 1. My orders are to go to the town of Belmora in Vardenfell District and report a man named Caius Cusades. Oh, so I also have like separate notes on each individual. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so my orders are to go to the town of Belmora. I can click on that and then I get like a detailed description of Belmora itself. Celis Gravius said that Balmora is north of Seda, that road passes Plagiad village and Fort Plagiad. Okay, so I can get everything that I unlock in dialogue and help me later on. So if I'm really struggling finding something, I can always review it in my journal. Find a man named Chaos Cusades. It Okay, so it just shows me what people have said about him, so I don't need to actually reread it. To find out where he lives, I should ask him Balmora at the corner club called Southwall. When I find him, I must give him a package of documents and await further order. Yes, let us look at this. Directions. Okay. And I believe you just drop it on yourself to read. Brynjar Einarsson, you have been given these directions and a package of documents. Do not show them to anyone. Do not attempt to read the documents in the package. The package has been sealed and your tampering will be discovered and punished. Oh my. Follow these directions. Proceed to the town of Balmora in Vardenfell district. Report a man in Caius Cusades. He will be your superior and patron. You will follow his orders. His residence is not known, but ask at the corner club called South Wall. People there will know where to find Caius Cusades. When you report to Caius Cusades, deliver the package of documents to him and wait for further orders. Remember, you owe your life and freedom to the Emperor. Serve him well and you will be rewarded. Betray him and you will suffer the fate of all traitors. I have the honor to prepare this at the direction of His Most Sovereign Ma Majesty, the Emperor Uriel Septim. Glabrio Be Belenius, personal secretary to the Emperor. All right, so the Emperor is like, well, dude, I got stuff for you to do. That's fine. So, I'm in town. Sup, sup, dude. Speak freely, friend. How you doing? Yeah, that's what you want. If you're looking to get out of Seda, I'll be happy to give you a little advice. What is a little advice? New here, take the Silt Strider to Vivek or Balmora. Fast and cheap, no trouble with wild animals and smugglers. I would kind of like to hit the road, though, honestly, and just sort of get a feel for things. And smugglers, and bandits, and outlaws. Go see Darvaim Hlarn over at the Strider port, over the bridge and east along the water, and tell Vrudonius Nucius sent you. Right, that's me. If you decide to take the Seal Strider, tell Davam Hilaran I sent you. Maybe I'll get a discount if I do. So I can talk about these things. Background. I am Vrudonius Nucius, commoner. Cool, Imperial. Our civilization has brought peace and prosperity to all. Oh god, they're so stuck up. We place our faith in hard work, education, and discipline. Yes, yes, yes. We prefer free trade and diplomacy, but are not ashamed to use force. The latest rumors. My son was recently shipped up to Fort Frostmoth on the island of Solstheim. Ooh, 
You go here in the Skyrim expansion, Dragonborn, if you remember. Was that the name of the expansion? Da drag, drag, that was that was the name of the expansion, right? I don't know what it did to deserve that, but it couldn't have been good. That's the frozen island up to the north, right? Sounds awful to me. If you're looking to get there, you might check for transportation in Cool. So we could go to Solstheim, your journal has been updated. Alright, a little secret? Talk to everyone. Talk is cheap. Ask questions. You don't ask, you never learn. Alright, what's your trade? I'm a commoner. I do whatever needs doing. Cooking, cleaning, building, baking, making, breaking. And by your accent, I can tell you are an outlander. Since you're new to these parts, perhaps you'd like me to share a little local lore. Yeah, I, I'd be down for that. Tell me about some services, though. Get food and sundries from Ariel's trade house. That's also where you'll find anyone who offers training. Not much else in the way of services in this damp little squat. So we'll probably want to check out the trade house. Someone in particular. The Altmer Ariel runs Ariel's trade house. Sucusius Argala is the chief agent at the census and excise offices. Yeah, I have. Okay. Specific place. Not much here. Ariel's trade house, the census and excise offices. That's the coast guard too, and a lighthouse. And that's it. Still, strata service goes to Vivek, Palmora, Nisus, and Suron. The road goes north, past Blagad, to Balmora, and east to Vivek, and southeast to Ebonar. So we basically just gotta go north. And... Thank you, my good man. You have been, uh... Splendid company. I wanna see if I can find some of the same old voice actors. Hello. All right, I'm listening. This seems like a new one. Are you the one the boat dropped off? I have to see a boat arrive at the time of the day. Hope the Imperials treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. Your ring? I swear, one of the guards has it. I had it last week before their weekly Let's Shake Down Fargoth ritual. An engraved healing ring, family heirloom of mine. You haven't seen it, have you? That would be the ring we found in the bucket. That cool little healing ring. You know what? That's just the kind of person I am. Here. Take it. Ah, you found it! Amazing! Thank you, thank you! You are now my favorite friend! I'll be sure to tell the others, especially my friend Ariel, who runs the trade house here. Go see him, he'll be happy to see you now. Ooh, maybe his disposition will be higher and I can get better prizes. Wow, this guy likes me now, that's good. Alright, thanks buddy. You're a commoner. Rumors, I've heard that the local tax collector, Processus Vitellius, is missing. No surprise, really. He wasn't well liked around here. <laughs> Local tax collector goes missing. Nobody cares. Little advice. It pays to take it slow when you first come to Morrowind. When you talk to folks, keep an eye on their dispositions. Let you know if they don't like them and it's smart to get on a fast good side before you ask for a favor. Yeah, I figured as much. Do you have a little secret? Any naughty things I should know? Daedra? You know what they are, right? Well, Daedric shrines are where Daedra calls worship Daedra. Bad people who summon bad Daedra. Stay away from them. Why? Because Daedra are nasty. And the folks that worship them are even nastier. Isn't Daedra worship common for the Dark Elves? Then again, this this man looks like a Wood Elf, but I would assume that he knows about the Dark Elf culture, because considering he's living in Morrowind. I'm a commoner, I do whatever needs doing. Okay, the ring, services, and I believe he will just say the same. Solstheim, a terrible place I've heard. There's a boat from Cool if you have any reason to go. Someone in particular. Alright. Well, good day, Fargoth! I said good day! So we could go into these houses, but we'd have to like break the... Pick the lock, and I don't necessarily want to do that. It's a house here. Let me have a look. Oh, hello, hello. Sup? Welcome to Seda Nain, stranger. Is there some specific place you're looking for? Hmm. Not really. Do you have anything interesting? The local tax collector has gone missing. Little advice. Phew, you're bitter green green, Outlander. Might as well wear a sign you in town. Hey! Word of advice, buy a little goodwill. Lose a few drakes, gain a friend. Folks will lose up if you spread a little of the Emperor's gold around. So you can actually bribe people to make them like you more. Like the other games. Little secret. Talk to everyone. And I don't believe there's anything else that she would like to say. Yes. Okay. Yes, Outlander. And that's the Dark Elf voice from Oblivion. Sweet stuff. Well, guys and girls, we are here, and I know that there's a lot of dialogue, and there's like a generally slow pace, but honestly, I don't really mind it, because it's... That's sort of part of the charm of Morrowind, from what I've understood, because I have felt a little bit of... When I look at the game 
the games in order that Bethesda have made, I do see a bit of a dumbing down or a bit of a maybe oversimplification of certain mechanics and the way certain things work. And if you know me, you know how much I despise having quests shoved down my throat. In this game, it's like, oh, well, is that a mud crab? Oh my god, that's a mud crab! Kill it! In this game, it's like, oh, you want a quest? Well, go talk to people, explore, and write down in your journal. We're not gonna give you any quest markers. You're you're on your own, and yeah. Ugh. Wah. Wah. Ow. Oh, that sounds like the same uh, Nord actor from Oblivion. Yeah. Die, mud crab. Yeah. Huh. So should I like hold it for a little bit and then release? Yeah. Should I hold it for a long time and then bam? Or just stabby stabby. Got him. So combat's gonna take a while getting used to. You can also do something kind of cool. You can dispose of corpses, <laughs> which I find to be just like a cool little option anymore. Oh, there's another one. Do I have any? I should go in with a candlestick. No, it's pointless. So I don't want to use any of my spells, really. I'm just gonna go in and pokey. Yeah, stab the mud crab. Your unarmed skill. Yeah, I don't have any armor. Maybe I should go to the trade house and see if I can buy some armor because me helping out Fargoth might give me better prices at the at the at the house. So yes, I'm 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 intrigued. I've been in a mood for something more a deeper gaming experience lately because I've had sort of like a Dungeons and Dragons urge, but I don't have any friends. So I just want some sort of fantasy experience that's a bit deeper. And I know a lot of people probably aren't going to be watching this series, and I understand why. The but for those of you who are interested in coming along with me on this deep fantasy adventure, with god-awful running animations, I have to be honest, then you are very welcome to keep watching. I hear a lot of similarities in the Oblivion soundtrack in this one. Well, I think the trade house is right here. But before we go there, we will end the episode. Well, guys and girl girls, this is Brynjar Einarsson. He is the last Einarian. Maybe one day he can make the legacy of his clan continue by actually finding a hot waifu, but that's gonna be difficult with these graphics. Tune in next time when the story continues. Have a still good day, take care and stay awesome. But most importantly, everybody, stay dark. Goodbye.